When the James Webb Space Telescope first opened its mirrors to the cosmos, astronomers expected clearer images, sharper data, and a more detailed look at the early universe. What they did not expect was that Webb would begin to undermine one of the most established principles in modern cosmology that the universe looks the same in every direction and evolves according to the same rules everywhere. Within its first year of operation, Webb detected galaxies that appeared far too massive, far too organized, and far too luminous to fit into the current model of cosmic history. At first, the data seemed like a triumph, a testament to the telescope's power. But as more measurements came in, a deeper mystery emerged. The numbers didn't agree with each other. The universe, it seemed, was expanding faster in some regions than others. This isn't just a technical problem. It strikes at the heart of how we think the cosmos works. For nearly a century, astronomers have relied on the assumption of cosmic isotropy, that on large scales, the universe is uniform. Whether you look north or south, near or far, the expansion rate should be the same. But Webb's precision has revealed subtle deviations, tiny but persistent, that may mean the cosmos is more complex than Einstein's equations ever implied. To grasp why this is so important, we have to return to the foundation of modern cosmology. In 1929, Edwin Hubble discovered that distant galaxies are moving away from us, their light stretched into longer, redder wavelengths by the expansion of space. The farther away a galaxy lies, the faster it recedes, a relationship now called Hubble's Law. This gave rise to the Big Bang model. If space is expanding now, it must have been smaller, denser, and hotter in the past. For decades, this model held firm. Astronomers measured the expansion rate, the Hubble constant, using two main methods, observing nearby stars and galaxies, and studying the faint cosmic microwave background, the afterglow of the Big Bang. Both approaches should have yielded the same number, but they don't. The difference is small, just a few kilometers per second per megaparsec yet it refuses to go away. This disagreement is known as the Hubble tension, and Webb has only deepened it. By observing the light from ancient supernovae and variable stars, Webb confirmed that the local universe appears to be expanding faster than predicted by the early universe data. If the measurements are right, something fundamental is missing from our equations. Nobel Prize-winning astrophysicist Adam Rees, who helped discover the accelerating expansion of the universe in 1998, described Webb's findings as both thrilling and unsettling. He said, if this tension persists, it's telling us that the universe has new physics waiting to be uncovered. One possibility is that dark energy, the mysterious force driving cosmic acceleration, is not constant, as Einstein once proposed, but evolving. Another is that the geometry of space itself isn't as smooth as we thought. A small curvature, a hidden asymmetry, could change how light travels across billions of light years, making distant objects appear older or brighter than they truly are. And then there is an even more radical idea, that time itself might flow differently in different parts of the universe. This concept, known as timescape cosmology, suggests that the universe is not expanding uniformly. Dense regions, such as clusters of galaxies, experience gravity's pull more strongly and age more slowly, while vast cosmic voids, almost empty of matter, expand faster. To observers like us, who live inside one of these denser regions, the cosmos may appear to accelerate not because of a mysterious dark energy, but because time itself runs at different speeds across the cosmic landscape. It's a subtle distinction, but if true, 
it would reshape our understanding of the Big Bang. Instead of a single global clock governing cosmic evolution, there would be countless local clocks, each ticking at its own rhythm. The James Webb Telescope's high-precision data, especially its measurements of early galaxy clusters and cosmic background structure, could provide the first observational test of this idea. Yet, the mystery doesn't stop there. Some of Webb's deep field images reveal galaxy alignments that appear correlated across enormous distances, hundreds of millions of light years, as if the universe carries a faint directional pattern. This contradicts the cosmological principle, the long-held belief that the universe has no preferred orientation. When Webb's findings were compared to older data from Planck and Hubble, researchers noticed a subtle anisotropy, a preferred axis in the microwave background known as the cosmic flow. The pattern suggests that large regions of space are moving relative to the cosmic rest frame, almost as if the entire observable universe were being pulled by something beyond its visible edge. For decades, astronomers called this the dark flow and treated it as an unresolved curiosity. Now, Webb's extraordinary sensitivity has revived the question. Is this motion real? And if so, what could cause it? Some cosmologists propose that our universe may be interacting gravitationally with a massive structure beyond the observable horizon, perhaps a dense cluster of matter, or even another universe. Others point to the possibility that the early cosmos experienced uneven inflation, that the rapid expansion following the Big Bang was slightly faster in one direction than another, leaving a permanent imprint. Whatever the cause, the implications are staggering. If space itself is not uniform, then our measurements of distance, age, and expansion may all need correction. The universe could be larger, older, or shaped differently than we think. To understand how profound this would be, consider how Einstein's general relativity describes gravity. In his equations, matter and energy tell space-time how to curve, and that curvature tells matter how to move. The theory has been confirmed again and again, from the orbit of Mercury to the warping of starlight by distant galaxies. But relativity assumes that on the grandest scales, the universe's curvature averages out to zero, flat and isotropic. Webb's results are whispering that it might not be. In response, physicists are exploring new models, extensions of general relativity that include tiny corrections over cosmic distances. Some suggest that the universe's expansion is driven not by a uniform dark energy, but by the geometry of space itself, a self-adjusting curvature that changes with time. In such theories, the cosmic acceleration is not a mysterious push, but a geometric illusion created by the uneven stretching of space-time. Meanwhile, the debate over the Hubble tension continues. Each new attempt to reconcile the two measurements seems to fail. Some researchers have speculated that light from the early universe may be scattering off invisible structures, filaments of dark matter, that alter its apparent distance. Others think the early universe radiation we see in the cosmic microwave background might not represent the true starting conditions of space, but rather a boundary between regions of different physical laws. That last idea connects with a concept once thought purely theoretical, the multiverse. If inflation produced countless bubble universes, each expanding with slightly different properties, collisions or overlaps between them could have left subtle traces, distortions in temperature, polarization, or galaxy distribution. Some of Webb's deepest fields show circular patterns and faint discontinuities that match what such interactions might look like. They are not proof, but they are hints, glimpses of a reality larger than the one we can directly observe. Among those who see potential in this direction is Roger Penrose, the Nobel Prize-winning physicist whose theory of conformal cyclic cosmology imagines an eternal succession of universes, each giving birth to the next through the evaporation of black holes. To Penrose, the anomalies Webb is revealing, the excessive brightness of early galaxies, the smoothness of background radiation, the subtle patterns in the deep sky, 
might be the first observational evidence that our cosmos inherited structure from a previous eon. It's a daring idea, but cosmology has always advanced through bold thinking. When Einstein first proposed relativity, it seemed abstract and unnecessary. When Hubble discovered expansion, it shattered the notion of a static cosmos. And when dark energy was confirmed, it upended everything once more. Webb's revelations could mark the next great turning point, the moment we realize that the universe is not just expanding faster, but evolving in ways we have yet to comprehend. Still, amid the uncertainty, there's a deeper beauty to what Webb is showing us. Every discrepancy, every contradiction is an invitation to look again, to question the assumptions that have guided science for a century. The telescope's mirrors are not just capturing light, they are reflecting our curiosity back at us. Astronomer Wendy Friedman, who helped measure the first precise value of the Hubble constant, calls this era cosmology's golden uncertainty. She says we have exquisite data, but the more accurate it becomes, the less the pieces seem to fit. And that's the best possible place for science to be. In other words, Webb is not breaking cosmology, it's making it allied again. As new observations accumulate, NASA and the European Space Agency are preparing to cross-check Webb's results with those of upcoming missions like the Roman Space Telescope and LISA, the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, which will detect gravitational waves from across the cosmos. Together, these instruments could reveal whether the expansion we see is uniform or laced with hidden patterns, whether the universe truly obeys a single cosmic law or dances to rhythms still unknown. For now, Webb keeps watching, gathering photons that have traveled for billions of years. Each image adds another brushstroke to the portrait of creation, a portrait that, for the first time, seems to be painting us back. Perhaps the greatest lesson is humility. The cosmos we thought we understood is turning out to be more intricate, more dynamic, and more alive than our equations suggest. Einstein once wrote that the eternal mystery of the world is its comprehensibility. Webb reminds us that even that comprehension is provisional. The more precisely we measure, the more mysterious the universe becomes. If the James Webb Space Telescope has taught us anything, it's that the universe is not a solved puzzle, it's an unfolding story. Every photon Webb captures is a word from a language we are only beginning to decipher. And if these latest discoveries truly hint at new physics, new geometries, or new universes, then astronomy itself is entering a new age, one where the boundaries between observation and imagination blur into something profound. We stand on the edge of that revelation. Looking through Webb's mirrors, we are seeing not just the past, but the evolving future of our understanding, a cosmos that refuses to fit neatly into our expectations, that continues to expand not just in space, but in meaning. And as we listen to the faint light from the beginning of time, one truth becomes clear. Discovery is not about finding certainty. It's about embracing the unknown and realizing that the universe, in all its complexity, is still writing the rules as we watch.